Support for Outdoor Nevada comes from Jaguar Land Rover Las Vegas. We're proud to help introduce a new generation of adventurers to the diverse experiences that our state has to offer. Information at jlrlv.com. Today on Outdoor Nevada, we're in Nye County exploring and learning about Beatty and the surrounding area. Nowadays, this area is known as the gateway to Death Valley. But in the early 1900s, this was a booming mining town with great big plans. Welcome to Beatty, Nevada. And today, I'm here at the local museum to talk to Nicole. Let's take a closer look. There she is. Hi, John. Nicole, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm great. Hey, nice little town you got here. Oh, thank you, I like it. How many people are here? About a thousand if you count the boroughs. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. How did Beatty get started? Uh, Beatty started with a few ranchers, uh, cattle, a few ranchers. It wasn't until 1904 when they discovered gold that things really started to happen. Oh, that's interesting. And I'm guessing that Beatty was a guy. Yes, Montilius Beatty. Montilius? Montilius Old Man Beatty. And did he have a ranch here? He did. Would you like to see it? Well, yeah, that's but, part of the reason I'm here. That'd be great. Great. The museum's um, in the process of restoring it, so I can take you out there. Let's go. All right. Old Man Beatty's ranch is less than a couple of miles away from the museum. Well, 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 look at this. Do you get shivers like I do when you just, you have history like this so close by? You do. Um, I love history, and uh, this is the Beatty Ranch. This is amazing. This is amazing. OK, so fill me in. Exactly what am I looking at here? Well, this is what is left of Old Man Beatty's Ranch, uh, just the stone structure. There was a lot more in, back in the day. Nicole went on to explain that Beatty was established in 1905, named after Montilius Old Man Beatty who was a Civil War veteran and made his home here not far from the Armagosa River in 1896. He eventually became its first postmaster in 1905. The community was laid out around mid-1904 after Bob Montgomery, owner of the Montgomery Shoshone Mine near Rhyolite, decided to build the Montgomery Hotel in Beatty. Montgomery was drawn to the area known as the Bullfrog Mining District because of a gold rush that began in 1904. It was at that time with the arrival of the railroad in 1905, the town became a railway center for the Bullfrog Mining District, including mining towns such as nearby Rhyolite. Let's talk about Beatty versus Rhyolite, which is nearby. One had one thing and one had the other, didn't they? Right, uh, Beatty had water and Rhyolite had the gold. As a result, Beatty became a staging area? Yeah, it was. Virtually a supply town. I mean, even when Rylite had 10,000 people, Beatty had maybe 1,000 tops. But they had the water, and they, they had the railways that connected everything. So what happened? Everything went bust. Uh, well, 1906 earthquakes in San Francisco, that created the financial panic back east. The banks pull out. There's no money. If there's no money to back the mines, the miners pull out and everybody just goes away. Wait, it happened fast, didn't it? Very fast. At one point, there was a PR push to really get Beatty going. What, what was that about? Yeah, and that was in early 1907 as well. Um, so the investors, they offered free train with whining and dining, fresh fruit, fresh seafood, wine, come out to Beatty, invest your money at Rhyolite, you know, wealth. And uh, they went as far as to advertise in England 
um, you know, showing pictures of paddle wheel boats going up the mighty Amargosa River to Goldfield, you know, for the ore. <laughs> and it was all a scam, but it, it said it, it helped me. It really did. What about the railroad tracks? What, where are they? What happened to them? Well, in 1942, the last train came through and they pulled all the tracks for steel in the war. Gotcha. Yeah. So what do you see as the, the future of Beatty from here? Well, uh, tourism is a big part of it. I mean, gateway to Death Valley, um, the off-roading, the birding, the biking. Um, and there's also a lot of mining. There's, there's a lot of mining development going on now, which will bring money. So you have high hopes for this area. I do, I do. It's a great place and um, I think it's, Beatty's always survived. You also have high hopes for this, don't you? You're gonna, you guys are gonna try and put that back together. We plan to get it back up to what it was with the materials we have and people can come out, see a part of history, enjoy the outdoors and it'll be great. It's not only pleasant, it's really important. And I, I have a little something for you. Really? This is, yeah, see, this is, this is what you're headed for. Now this is the house right here. The, this, yes, this that right is here. it. And is that his wife? Yes, that would be his wife and two of the three children. That's amazing, especially when you see it. You know what? I'm going to give this to you because you're going to be busy and you're going to need it. Well, thank you so much, John. You're my kind of hero because you spent time with me today, allowed me to ask all these questions, and you're fighting for Nevada history and American history, and I couldn't, couldn't be prouder of you and more grateful for the time that we spent today. Absolutely no problem. I hope you come back and see it when it's done. I'm going to do that, and I know you're really good at finding arrowheads, so will you take me arrowhead hunting next time? I definitely will, John. I'm waiting for it. It's a date. All right. From here, I decided to take a short drive over to the other historic boom town, but this one has a bit of a different feel. You know, it happens every single time. You're driving around Nevada and you just get launched into the past. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Today, we're going back more than 100 years as we visit the authentic ghost town of Rhyolite. Come on, we have to go talk to the unofficial mayor. A little chilly in these parts. Yep, mostly the wind. Hey, I'm dying to ask you, how do you become the unofficial mayor of Rhyolite? How do, who, who said? Well, it's really an interesting story, uh, and I had no idea this was going to happen. So the uh, Happy Burrow and Beatty. So I go into Happy Burrow, and they call me to come on down. So I'm sitting at the bar having a beer. Next thing you know, there's two, two entrances to it, right? One entrance opens, and they all had signs. They were all from the National Park and from town, right? And they had signs, elect Carl Mayor, elect Carl Mayor. The other door opened, and these people came in and said, impeach the liar. <laughs> He's nothing but a thief. So they had a meeting with all the signs around me, and then the town voted. All the people were there, and they elected me the mayor of Rhyolite. Oh, they made a good choice. Tell me about the house that we're at right now. This is very unique. Yeah, it is really unique. And uh, it's one of the last really standing ones in Nevada, all right? I mean, there's, there's other ones in Goldfield, but they're mostly knocked down. But anyway, a gentleman by the name of Kelly, and supposedly he was a bartender, <clears throat> and he built it. And it's really interesting how he built it. He had a German mason that was building it, but he paid the kids 10 cents a wagon load to go around town and pick up all the bottles. That's how the bottles got here. And then what he did is he basically sold lotto tickets for the house, and whoever won the house got owned the house. So it was like a modern day lotto, right? If you think about it that way, right? It wasn't an auction, he actually sold tickets. So supposedly, and there's a lot of uh, things you, you know, in Rhyolite, you don't know whether it really is true or not. So supposedly the people that won the house had a daughter, right? And this is, now this one is from the newspaper of the time period. They named their daughter Rhyolite and then they challenged the town of Bullfrog over there to name their first girl child after their town. And that's supposedly the story of, of but it wasn't a lot of. How much money did he make on that raffle? 
I have no idea. I've heard everything from, you know, $1,000 to $100,000, right? How many bottles do you think it took to make this house? There's supposed to be, now I've never counted them right, but there's supposed to be 64,000 bottles. And if you look at them, if you walk around and look at them, they're beer bottles, wine bottles, whiskey bottles, champagne bottles, and some of them are medicine bottles. And there's a bottle on the other side of the house that in the, in the glass is supposedly a, a bug of some sort, but I've never seen that, huh. no. You know what's interesting about Rhyolite is that it's, it's substantial. I mean, you can almost see the people walking down the street, can't you? Yeah, and especially if you, um, like I have a lot of the um, Sanborn maps that show the layout of the area and I have a lot of the uh, archaeological reviews. So when I walk this town, it's like for real. You know, especially sometimes at night, like at, at, at sunset, right? It, 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 you can feel the vibration in the place. It's alive, not ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts, but the feeling of it, yes. That's, that's well said. You can almost hear the piano playing. I mean, you can, you can really yeah. get a sense of when you come. You live out this way, don't you? Yes, I live right behind the bottle house underneath the uh, other shed over there. What's it like out here? Oh, I love it. Why? Well, the night sky, the quietness, and sometimes I even like the people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are the unofficial mayor. <laughs> well, I know, but you know. Hey, listen, I know it's breezy around here, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go stroll and, and take a look. But it is sure good to spend time with you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. It's a, it's a great place to spend time. All right. Maybe we'll see you up the road. All right. See you up the road, John. I did just that. Made my way up the main street. You can definitely feel the energy of this town. In 1905, Rhyolite was a boom town with electricity, water, a school, a bank, and a population of around 5,000 people. But by 1911, the mining was done, the people and businesses gone. And by 1920, the population of Rhyolite was zero. A ghost town, crumbling and slowly disappearing. But people still found their way here. Eventually, the Bureau of Land Management took over watch of the town and preserved its history. Yeah, sure, Carl is the unofficial mayor of Rhyolite and knows a lot, but I did meet up with Cassie an archaeologist with the Bureau of Land Management. Cassie, how did you get into this line of work? You know, as a little kid, I, uh, I loved history books. I loved going to museums, anything old um, just fascinated me. I really um, enjoyed learning about how people used to live before, before I did. What, now, you, you ended up in Tonopah. How'd you end up there? I, you know, it was a little interesting circumstance. Uh, BLM was offering two positions for archaeologists. My husband and I were both archaeologists. Um, really hard to, to move locations when both of you are looking for employment. And we really liked the area. So That worked out pretty good. It, it, it did. It did. And how much are you enjoying the job? How much are you digging it? You know, I really do enjoy it. Um, I love um, the variety of it, the different aspects that I get to do. Um, you know, things like this. This is something that I couldn't have done if I wasn't working for the BLM. Tell me about the difference between living in Oregon, which is where you were, and living in Nevada, which is where you are now. Uh, you know, this is actually a lot like Eastern Oregon, um, but I did grow up in Western Oregon, the wet side. Uh, so this is a lot drier, but it's a lot more open. And uh, I just love being able to see the mountains. Yeah, I get it. Hey, tell me a little bit about this structure here. What was it? So this is the Cook Bank building. Um, so uh, John S. Cook, I uh, had a bank um, up in Goldfield, Nevada, and he decided to open up a branch down here uh, when Rhyolite first uh, became a big thing. Uh, the building was built um, in 1908 and uh, pretty much closed by 1909. See, that's what's interesting about Rhyolite to me, is that it was, it was really a quick life, wasn't mm -hmm. it? It was. Um, the gold was found in this area first in 1904, um, and then town started springing up around 1905, 1906. But by 1908, 1909, the mines had kind of played out, and uh, people were leaving the, uh, the area. And the, ironically, the San Francisco earthquake kind of played a part it did. The, the earthquake in 1906, um, San Francisco was the financial capital 
um, of the area. That's where all the money was flowing uh, from to this area to develop these mines. And so when that earthquake happened, uh, that pretty much put a stopper on that flow of income. You know, I've seen ghost towns in Nevada, but this one is special, I guess because it's so substantial. I just get the feeling that I'm, I can see the people walking up and down the sidewalks. Do you get that feeling? I do, I do. Um, that's one of the things that I enjoy about being out here is that, you know, I feel like I can feel the people that were here before me. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Main Street Rhyolite, what else should I be looking for around here? Well, you absolutely have to go look at the train depot. Uh, that's one of the best preserved buildings in town and is just a great uh, piece of architecture. I'm going now. All right. People from all over the world visit Rhyolite. It's living history. Cassie walked me up to the train station. It's the most preserved building in Rhyolite. It served as the hub of the town, and it's a beautiful structure. You can absolutely imagine it full of people and activity. You know, this is such a valuable place. What do you want people to know about coming out here and enjoying it? Yeah, I just want people to respect it and take only pictures and leave only memories. So treat it with respect and leave it in good condition for other people, right? Exactly, exactly. Right. Sounds, uh, sounds simple enough, it ought to be able to to happen, I think. Oh, look, it's the unofficial mayor of Rhyolite. Carl, how are you? How do you do, John? Good, good. Good, see you again. good seeing you, All man. Right. You might want to take a closer look? No, come on in, take a closer All right. look. All right. Well, you guys enjoy yourselves. All right, thanks. Incredible town, lots of good stories. One of the stories that came out of this town was scandalous. That was a big scandal that happened here, right? What yeah. was that story? Well, the scandal that happened was uh, the Soil Dove. And the uh, Soil Dove, the red light district down there, her name was Mona Bell. That was her working name. And um, she kind of ran away with this guy, Fred Skinner. And they ended up down here. And he eventually shot her. And then afterwards, he ran out into the street yelling that he shot Mona. And then they were going to lynch him, and he ended up serving jail time for it. That's a, that's a big scandal out here in the desert back in the day. Oh, yeah, but it gets better. Oh. So anyway, her husband's name, Hackle, he came down here and actually took her body back and buried. She's buried in Ballard, Washington. But there's a marker here, isn't there? Yeah, there's a marker, and it's down, down off in the desert here. And it, what they did is they, they built that site more to keep her legend alive and also to bring more tourists. It's very interesting. It's, a, it's an interesting site. It's visited by a lot of people. There's a group comes here every, day, every year. They leave empty wine bottles. They leave um, uh, Mardi Gras beads. And then they kind of circle around her grave. And it's a great story. I mean, it, it keeps the legend alive. Well, I know two more people who are going to visit that site. Me and you, right now, let's All go. Right. <laughs> I did a little more digging into who Mona Bell was and her story. She was a dance hall girl and worked the red light district in Rhyolite. She was also working and saving her money to make something more for herself. She and another dance hall girl bought a bar and on New Year's Day, they opened the Mission Bar. The dream started, but ended tragically. It was the day after she opened the bar when Fred Skinner, Mona's then boyfriend, shot and killed Mona. Her story and legend lives on here. This grave is a symbol and site for people to visit and honor the wild women of the West. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is a little more substantial than what I thought you were bringing me to. <laughs> yeah, it kinda is, isn't it? But it's, it's amazing, you know, when you look at it and think about how many people come out here. Look, nobody even touches the money. It's an homage to a time past and a very eclectic one at that, is it not? I think so, I think so. But the one good thing about it is it keeps the history of the area growing. Mm. And that way the town will never die. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> As it turns out, Carl wasn't quite done with me. Not only is Carl the unofficial mayor of Rhyolite, He's also mapped the majority of the OHV trails around Beatty. He offered to take me around the trails, and, well, I just couldn't pass that up. 
Now, these trails here in, in Nye County, they seem to go forever. They're beautiful, and you've taken the time to map them out? Yeah, we started, uh, we started actually six years ago, and uh, Jenny N Nelson from the park and myself, we ended up writing three guidebooks for the trails, and we made maps. That's a big help to a lot of people. Why'd you do it? Um, I don't know, passion, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the area is so, um, it's, it's just so extraordinary, right? And you know, the mining history, the, the prehistoric history, the, the railroad history, and it just fascinated me. You know, the whole area fascinated me. And it was never, um, it was also one of the other main reasons we did it was we're trying to attract people to stay here and recreate. Because um, this area has a lot and it, it's never been really um, properly advertised. Yeah. Let's go recreate. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Now, most people rip through these trails. Carl, well, he takes them a little bit slower. He likes to be able to point out the sites, talk through the history, give details on the landscape, and let you know, just wait, the good stuff is coming up. And it went into Rhyolite. And man, this guy knows a lot about everything, and I mean everything. And we covered a lot of territory, and Carl, well, he had a lot to show me and tell me about. Carl's an amazing guy. I really enjoyed every minute of our time. Carl and I made our way along the trails and took it all in. It was getting late in the day, but that didn't matter. I took the chance to take a quick break and have a chat. Wow. Carl, that is just unbelievable. That's like... I don't know what that's like. That's like uh, the Wicked Witch of the West lives in there I or know. something. I mean, that's just incredible. It's actually formed by volcanic flow. So when you drive through there, when you come through like we did, you'll see the pillars that came down. It's all volcanic. You have taken me to the, I mean, coolest places in one day. It's, it's amazing. Taking these trails, it pays to stop the car, especially if you have a map and you have confidence that you can get back to where you need to be, you know where you are, to get out of the vehicle, right? Right. Take a little hike, yeah? Yeah, because every, you know, that's another thing a lot of people don't realize. They look for trail systems, like, like we're in the national parks or the first service land, and they don't realize you could park and hike that whole canyon right to the top, loop it, and come down that canyon there. And it's kind of... Um, I don't know, to some people that's really scary to do that kind of exploration, but you can do it all over. And what we did on the maps is we put places of interest along the way, right? So like the Pioneer Mayflower Mine we went to today, you can stop there. We put it as a photo stop and as a stop, so they can stop and they can hike all of what we went to today. I mean, we didn't do um, half of where you and I went today. We could have driven up behind those mines and all, right? Well, you and I could spend weeks out I here know. doing this yeah, stuff, you know? Spend months out here. And, and I guess, I guess it, what, what you've done is connect people. And, and this is a very strange, basic question, but where did all these trails come from? Mostly, mostly all our roads around here were put in by mining, old mining, 1900s. And then later on in the, into the you know, 1917, 18, into the 20s. You're gonna be at this for a long time. Are you okay with that? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope I'm around a long time to keep doing it. Well, you've got a lot to do. I mean, connecting all this right. stuff. Um, one, one final question. When I tell you, gee, you know, we've been out here all day seeing just world-class sites because of these trails and the confidence to know where we're going, but we haven't seen any people. When I tell you that there's nobody out here, does that make you happy or does that frustrate you? Well, personally, right, it makes me happy, right? I'd rather be alone out here, right? But in some ways, like on the weekends when I see groups touring and all, then I realize that it's, it's good for what we're trying to do. Yeah. So I push my own, because I can come here anytime, right? When the crowds go, I can, it's all mine. And, and one last question, there's a lot of artifacts out here, whether it's mining, whether it's indigenous people. If you find an artifact, and you probably will, what do you do with it? Leave it right where it's at. Because what you're gonna do is if you go to a mine and you strip it out, 
You, you go to a mining site. You take, you take the buckets, you take all that stuff, and what are you going to do? Put it in your backyard? But what you've done is you've, de you've destroyed the history of the site. So, uh, same with the prehistoric. I mean, you pick it up and you take it, you can't date the site, you can't date the rock shelter. And this area is loaded. I mean, because of all the water in Oasis Valley, right, this place has been populated for 10,000 years or better. I mean, they've, they've found some really interesting archaeological sites. Well, we got a little daylight left. We got a lot of trail left. Can we see a few more things? Oh yeah, I got a lot more to show you. Let's rock. All right, let's ride. The biggest thing I took away from my time with Carl was that Beatty has a lot to offer the outdoor enthusiast. You could be on four wheels, two wheels, on horseback, or on foot. There's plenty to explore and more detailed maps on the way. You know, most people will drive through Beatty, maybe stop for gas or some jerky, and I'm here to tell you, you're missing out. There is so much to explore and do. You just have to get off the pavement and do some looking around. Beatty in the surrounding area is unique. Here, you can choose your own adventure, where you can explore the history and the landscape at the same time. Beatty is an amazing place. And when you do go, make sure you look up Carl. Tell him Outdoor Nevada sent you. And John said hi. Support for Outdoor Nevada comes from Jaguar Land Rover Las Vegas. Inspiring the spirit of adventure with confidence in any terrain or condition. Information at jlrlv.com.